selling a home, but a lifestyle. Oops, there we go. Got it. <laughs> um, I'll let them do a little more detailed introduction of themselves um, a little later on as it, we, I conclude with the introduction remarks. But um, I thought I'd you know, start off with just kind of telling the town and then and the, the public about the team of experts engaged to, to help out with that. Again, Lee Bowman's my name, local uh, of a principal of Legion Land and Development. We're serving as the local development rep for Beechwood, more than experience here in the Chapel Hill area, providing places for people to live, work, and play. Our team's looking really forward over the next several months to work with the town staff and all the advisory boards um, here in Chapel Hill. Um, you'll find that our experts have experiences that have enabled us to develop and that not only meets the town's robust technical requirements, but they've been creative in our approach to integrate the, all the complexities that are important to this housing affordability to architectural uniqueness, as well as transportation concerns. We've been very thoughtful on how to balance those desires. Our lead project and engineer is Wolpert. They're an international planning and engineering local offices in the Carolinas. Our planners are out of their Atlanta office, but actually have local expertise as one of them grew up here in Chapel Hill. FMK is the primary architect for the project and they are responsible for the condo buildings. Um, they are based in Charlotte and consider architectural design as a craft and solution-based approach and have integrated that thinking into our designs. McKim and Creed handles a variety of engineering matters for us, but for this project, they're focused on our utilities. They are, have a national footprint, um, and, but a large presence here in the triangle. Transportation engineering is being handled or Emily Horn. They do design work across the globe but their local expertise is focused on transportation services with decades of work here in Chapel Hill. Um, we've also engaged a commercial consultant, John Fugo. John's very familiar with the local submarket as he was involved with creating and managing the Southern Village commercial development among others. And while our proposed retail is much smaller in scale, he's helping us understand the complementary users that are needed uh, for the broader market while making sure that we identify a sufficient neighborhood retail offering. And finally, we've engaged a local landscape planning and architecture firm, Surface 678, to help out with open space planning, landscape design, making. They work up and down the eastern seaboard, but have a strong foothold here in the Carolinas. That's really our team of experts that's working on the plan. And next, I'll get into an overview of that plan. But before I do so, um, end it over the principal of Beachwood Homes, Stephen Dubb. He's going to get background about Beachwood and, and perspective on who they are and, and why the Carolinas and why South Creek. So Stephen. Thanks Lee. Um, and Lee, just so you know, your internet's going in and out a little bit. We, we were able okay. to get um, most of what you were saying, but- um, Okay, I'm sorry guys, yeah. No no worries. Um, like I said, we got most of it. So- and I may have to I, do- off. Cool. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Stephen Dubb from Beachwood Homes. Uh, as Lee said, I'm, I'm one of the principals. I just, First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody for taking the time uh, to listen to us talk about uh, this proposed community today. Um, and I asked Lee if I could just take a few minutes to, to tell you a little bit about Beachwood, because I think who, who the developer is really does matter. Um, and, uh, and so I just wanted to give you a bit of history um, so that you know a little bit about, about us and, and who we are and our approach to things. So. The um, company was started in the mid-1980s by my father, Michael Dubb. Um, I have been here for 15 years, uh, and we're running the business together. In, in the past 35 years that we've been operating, we've built, I think, over 9,000 homes uh, across New York State, mostly in Long Island and the outer boroughs of New York City. Uh, and that's 9,000 homes over, I, I want to say, in 75 or so different communities. And we really build... Um, all types of housing. We, we don't have one specific type of housing or price point that we focus on. Um, so we have built hundreds of affordable homes in New York City and Nassau and Suffolk County. Um, and we built $7 million estates in, in the Hamptons. Um, but by and large, what we what we build is housing for middle class uh, New Yorkers. And, and by that, I mean, single family homes, town homes, um, some multifamily product, uh, priced from the 400s to the 700,000s, which which in Long Island is is considered uh, pretty affordable for for middle class housing. Uh, we're a family owned company. 
which means that um, we don't always have to make decisions in what we build uh, based on what the, what's best for the bottom line. We get to make decisions uh, based on what we think would would look nicest or or fit in best with the community, um, uh, which is great because we are proud of of everything that we've built and um, and want to remain proud of the communities that we build when we come and visit five, 10, 20 years later. Um, and that would be no different here in Chapel Hill. Uh, early in in 2020, we decided to expand into the Carolinas. And we're now uh, building and selling two communities uh, near Charlotte. We're about to open a third community for sale in a couple of weeks. Um, those will total uh, over 300 homes. Uh, and then in, in coming to Chapel Hill, uh, I don't think I need to explain to anybody uh, who's on the Zoom call today why Chapel Hill is is such a special place and, what, and, and that's why we were attracted to it. Um, but when we, we looked at the OB Creek site, we felt that we could improve upon the approved OB Creek plan um, uh, in a way that was maybe less intensive of a use from a traffic point of view, um, uh, maybe from a, a total built square footage point of view, uh, but also did more to address some of the challenges that the communities identified. Um, and, and by those challenges, uh, you know, I mean affordability for, for housing. I think the town council has commissioned more than one study that's identified uh, the missing middle as, as a big challenge for Chapel Hill. I think the statistic is that there are 19,000 people who commute into Chapel Hill every day um, to work there, but can't afford to live there. Um, and so in, in thinking about the design of, of the South Creek community, um, we really thought about trying to um, help address the the missing middle, the lack of housing for the missing middle in, in Chapel Hill. And of course, no one project is going to solve uh, these problems. They're large problems, but we can certainly help uh, uh, move it in the right direction. And so by missing middle, I mean housing in the 400s and 500,000, $600,000 range, um, in addition to the 15% affordable housing that we plan to build, um, and I also mean housing that's designed for young professionals and young families, um, because the the and amenities, community amenities as well, because that's what um, I think a few studies the towns commissioned have have identified as missing in Chapel Hill. Um, and in addition to that, we're gonna we're planning to preserve the 80 acres on the east side of of Ob Creek in perpetuity. Um, so we would just be developing the 40 acres on the on the uh, the west side of the creek. Um, and so we spent a lot of time over the last year since we've had those those meetings with the different town uh, boards uh, and with the town council and gotten input with the pub from the public on refining this plan and and we're excited to show it to you. Um, uh, so with that, Lee, I'll hand yeah. it back to you. But I just wanted to say hello to everybody and and um, we're looking forward to the next steps in the process. Super. Thank you, Stephen. And I think if I keep my video off, how's my my voice? Is it still? Much, Much better, better, yeah. yeah. Okay, L let me do that. And uh, Sharnika, um, I'll try to share my screen with the, that slideshow, but perhaps if I, if I get unstable internet, um, you, I may need you to, to pull that up for me, but give me one second here. And we've got an overview of the site plan as Stephen was alluding to. So let's see here. Okay, is that any So is everybody see that? So, so I think I think you're on mute, Charnika. Is that working? Okay, good, good, good. Okay. It's still, Lee, you're still kind of cutting out. So I can try to share. Okay. Um, if you want to stick to audio. Yeah. Let me uh stop sharing and yeah, if you don't mind, and I'll give you cues as to when when to change the screen. My apologies. It just got got a fiber connection. Something's going on here today. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, can everyone see that? Can you see this? Oh, yes, yes. ma'am. We're... Yes. Okay. Okay, so I, I, what I'm gonna do is kind of highlight some key features. And after that, uh, I'd certainly look forward to hearing from questions and comments from the public. Um, this this first page is the uh, the beginning of our uh, application, our rezoning application. It's the first of 33 sheets, actually. Um, it's the cover page and, and you can see there um, that arrow a photo on um, our project is there on kind of the right side of 15501 Southern Village on the left and then down in that, that bottom part of the middle uh, page is our actual site plan that's about a 40 acre piece where development is but as Stephen alluded to 
to, there's another 80 acres uh, to net 120. And if you could go to the next page or the next sheet, Trinica, in, in the slideshow. And so, yeah, there we go. So, so that red line there, that's the project boundary. And this is actually the fifth sheet in our submittal of 33 pages, but I can, for the submittal or for the presentation, I condensed them, you know, all, so to go through pages that are more relevant right now. Um, but as, as um, you can see, it's 120 acres total, and uh, the property is kind of characterized as, as moderate to steep slopes on both sides of, of Wilson Creek. And so Wilson Creek is there kind of in the middle. It, it bisects the property and meanders to the northward part of the project towards Morgan Creek. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the, 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 the slopes and how we've, uh, our aim is in regarding um, topography and, and using the grade, so to speak, to, uh, to be made up in the buildings with underground parking. Our architect is here, can speak to that. Um, but just, just kind of wanted to focus in on the entirety of the, the project. And, you know, Stephen mentioned earlier that that property on the eastern side of Wilson Creek, I think it was referred to as Obi Creek early. I think officially it is known as Wilson Creek, but that 80 or so acres is proposed to be in a conservation easement. And we've been talking to some folks locally um, that do that type of work about uh, handling that for us. So we're really excited about that opportunity to preserve that 80 acres um, in perpetuity as, as it exists. Um, so if you would uh, scroll to the next page, that's kind of the middle of our application document, but it's a little more detailed site plan that we can talk about and maybe just zoom in just a hair there, if you don't mind. Um, that's, that's that 40 acre piece of, of property that's gonna to propose to be developed. And up, maybe, oh, back one more, uh, I'm sorry, back to where you were. Apologies for the awkwardness here, but um, there road A and road B, uh, those um, for reference on the other side of 15501, road A is known as Sumac and road B is Market Street at Southern Village. Um, there you go. Yes, ma'am. Thank you there. Um, so obviously, most people know the Southern Village Market Street intersection and then Sumac is kind of the access point that you've got into the Southern Community Park there. Um, you know, from a transportation standpoint, we want both of those intersections and access point to be full service uh, or, or, or full movement uh, intersections and to be designed in a manner in which it's, it's friendly for pedestrians and bicyclists on grade. So we've been working with, with town staff and DOT on doing so, and we're in the middle of that process um, as it relates to those improvements that meet the town's uh, standards and, and DOT. So uh, from an access standpoint, those will be our primary two, but then a little bit more to the, to the right of the page, it's, it's kind of off the screen there too, it would be a northernmost access point. That would be really more of a, of a right in, right out there. Yes, right right in there, thank you. Yeah. And so in, in conjunction with the analysis of these intersection improvements, uh, we're also working on uh, how to integrate a bus rapid transit site there at Road B at Market Street, um, north or south side of, the, of that intersection. We're, we're still working on the best place to integrate that, but we believe, and, and we're very excited about the ability to provide multiple modes of transportation for not just our residents, but the community at large. Um, and so now I wanted to kind of touch on, Stephen did a great job earlier of talking about the housing typology, but now that you can see the site plan, if you see the, the more rectangular shaped buildings, that's the, the for sale condominiums. Um, we said we have, we have townhouses and we have condominiums, but uh, the condominiums make up the majority of our housing types. Those are proposed to be 526 units. Uh, they range um, in, in price points and sizing from studios on up to larger three bedroom units. However, the majority of them will be um, one and two bedroom units. Um, I mentioned townhouses that they will be interspersed throughout. They're kind of the smaller rectangles and blocks of four or so generally that are, that are throughout the property. Um, and those, again, the, the goal we've got is to provide a variety of, of uh, segments of, of price points and, and housing options. Um, we've also planned a small commercial, neighborhood commercial offering. So, so back over there at Market Street, the Road B intersection um, is really our primary commercial node that we're proposing. 
Um, that L-shaped building right there beside where it says Road B, yes, thank you. That That is proposed to have retail on the ground floor. And then above that would be uh, similar to our condo buildings. The units there would be, but they would be apartment units, for rent units, about 60 or so units would, are proposed there. Um, and then a couple of other, that building 12 and building 10, those are proposed to be some office and retail and restaurant space too. Um, and then if you kind of move over to, to the, the central part of the development, the road A, the a node there and kind of the middle of that, yes, that, that area right in the central part is a terrace green space that has kind of an organizing principle for that part of the neighborhood, but also will provide programming for the, our residents and the public at large. And the corners of those buildings surrounding that, that terrace would be amenity space for our residents. They can you know, do things like fitness, have a cooking class, um, meeting space, that, that type of thing is what's proposed to be there for the residents. Um, and so in, in summary, you know, what we're proposing is a, a mix of complementary land uses in which they're clustered here in this compact manner so that we can preserve that 80 acres on the other side of Wilson Creek. And we think this approach will bolster that stock of housing that the town needs. And it's, as Stephen mentioned, it was actually highlighted in some of the uh, studies that the town's commission uh, recently by offering a variety of housing types that are suitable for a wide range of income levels and lifestyles. Um, you know, there's so many people that work at UNC and the hospitals that don't have options for housing here in Chapel Hill. And we hope um, they're just one example of, of, of the folks that will choose this neighborhood to be their home. And so um, at this point, though, I'd like to, to ask our architect, Mark Fishero with FMK to, to give a little more um, context to our site plan and highlight some of the building architecture. And he may need your help to um, Charnika with uh, a couple of the well, slides that he's got. Charnika, I might, I'm gonna try and share my screen because I, hopefully I don't have the same internet problems that Lee has. <laughs> um, bear with me here. Can everybody see that? Yes, we got you, Mark. Um, give me just a minute here. Let me get this maximized. So you're not seeing my dog. Um, okay. Um, what I wanted, what, what the the real chat, one of the biggest challenges with this site is, um, from a planning standpoint, is creating a um, a, a neighborhood. But also uh, probably the single biggest challenge on this particular site is the topography because we, we do fall somewhat precipitously from 15501 down to uh, Wilson Creek or Obi Creek. Um, and so what, what we've done is we're, the, the site plan basically sort of, for lack of a better way to put it, terraces the site uh, down the hill so that, um, Road A is fairly steeply sloped uh, off of the intersection, which again, this would be Sumac um, right here at the center. And Road B is also relatively steeply sloped down as Market Street. Um, and those both come down to Road C that runs left to right on your screen, uh, which is really our primary um, sort of main street of this community. Um, and then road E is lower still and road F is lower still. So it's, it's stair-stepping down the hill. Um, and what we tried to also do is to, um, we've incorporated as much parking, and this is actually an upside of the topography that we're dealing with, is we incorporated as much parking as possible under the buildings. And the fact that we have so much topography uh, does allow us to do that. And we're doing it in such a way that, that well, obviously certain sides of these parking garages are uh, enclosed by retaining earth. Uh, most, of, most of them have a substantial amount of open sides to them, uh, which, which you know, doesn't create that sort of true basement uh, garage syndrome. 
But as Lee pointed out, we have uh, the buildings that are numbered on this site plan, one, two, three, four, five through the middle here, six, seven, eight, nine uh, across the bottom, one through nine are all condo buildings. Um, all of these, and I'm just, I have to control the cursor so I can kind of reiterate some of the things. All of these in this zone are varying sizes of townhomes, as are these right here in this zone. Those are also townhomes. So the intent is to create as much variety as possible uh, of the building types. Um, but, but what we've done is we have essentially for the condos themselves, we have what we refer to as a short building, which is buildings one, two, and six. And then we have the longer building, which is three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. And I'm going to um, show you, I think I'm going to show you um, what those buildings look like. Um, this, this is one of the shorter buildings, um, the short, short condo buildings. And by way of explanation, this is actually, I believe, building one, which would be on the um, right-hand side of uh, Sumac. And this elevation would be the, we, we intentionally had a narrow elevation facing 15501 to to not have our buildings have an overwhelming presence on 15501, but instead kind of uh, have a, 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 a definite uh, presence, but not uh, dominating it. So this narrower facade is, is the one that faces 15501. And on the right hand right. side here, where my cursor is, is, is where Sumac would be at, at its highest point. And you can see on this side an entrance to the parking deck um, uh, on, the, on the back side. Um, this elevation is an elevation um, basically cut through Sumac with 15501 up here to the left. And our, I think it's road B or road C uh, is, is, is right here to the extreme right of this plan. These shorter buildings are what we call a four over two, which is four, four stories of building uh, above two levels of parking deck. Um, and you can see the two levels of parking deck. This is the actual backside of the building. So again, 15501 is up here on the right, road C is on the left, and you can see it slopes down to where we have one level of parking down here. And then the second level of parking is above it. And then you've got four stories of unit above that uh, or of residential condos above that. Um, the, the design of the architecture is intended to be um, somewhat traditional, somewhat familiar, um, but not rotely traditional. Um, it's, fam it's, a, it's a comfortable um, composition. It's, it, it, it borrows from traditional proportions, et cetera, but um, it's got a little bit more of a contemporary twist to it. Uh, you'll see that there are sloped roofs and parapet roofs. Um, we kind of, for the same reason, we're trying to create variety. Uh, we also, uh, architecturally, we are trying to break the building up in, into different masses so that the, long, the length of the building is not felt as strongly as it might otherwise be felt. So you have this sort of feeling like you've got a mass here and a mass here and a mass here as you would walk past the building. Uh, and the same thing, this is the front side, you've got a similar kind of breaking up the mass. We, we, I refer to that as the uh, uh, bookshelf approach to, to, the, to the architecture rather than the cruise ship approach. The cruise ship is kind of that big long where the whole thing has the same horizontal lines to it. Um, we are also, the roof, one of the things we're capitalizing on with the sloped roofs is the ability to put uh, condensing units up on the roofs of the buildings so that they will not have any impact on the streetscape um, and won't be a noise source. They're up high and out of the way and screened from view. Um, but that, this is one of, this is the, um, the shorter building and this is the longer building. Like I said, the shorter building is the two that are up on the street and one other. Um, there are three of those. There are six of these uh, and these are bigger buildings. They're longer. 
uh, and they are a five over two. So you've got five stories over two stories of parking deck. Um, the front elevation of that, the one that faces our main street, so to speak, that I referred to, which I think is road C on the site plan, uh, is, is this facade. And you'll notice that there's no driveway connections on this facade at all. What you're seeing with these cars is cars going up the slope street in front of the building. We're creating a streetscape with parallel parking. And then on the back side of the building is where we enter the parking deck. So we, so we basically along our main street, we, we effectively eliminate any pedestrian vehicular conflicts um, where people might be pulling in the, into the parking deck and walking by on the sidewalk. Um, but again, you can see the vocabulary of the architecture is similar to the shorter buildings where we're creating uh, variety with color and materials and building massing. Um, and we're again using the sloped roof pitches and the um, parapets in mixed together um, to create um, some variety uh, of, of architecture. Well, good, Mark. Th thank you. I think uh, I think that's probably a good stopping point there, unless there's one other burning thought or two. Oh, that's that's good. That's it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it, I've just got a, a few more points to make, and then certainly um, open it up for questions, and and, and we'll be here to to uh, answer those any questions or, or comments you might have. Um, I wanted to remind you that the, the meeting is an hour, so we do have until 6.15. Okay. Um, so just to allow some time for some public questions. And yeah, comments. okay. Well, and I'll, I'll, I'll be really brief and just, just wanted to highlight some of the things that aren't really site plan related, but we've talked about like affordable housing, for example. Um, Stephen mentioned, you know, that early on um, in his remarks and you know, from, from our perspective, we, as Stephen said, we, we know the town's objectives in its inclusionary zoning ordinance. And we've actually been um, meeting with local affordable housing providers over the past several months to really understand and provide something here in the southern part of Chapel Hill that, that meets not just the ordinance requirements, but meets the needs of the community. Um, we've talked to folks that do supportive housing. We've talked to a, a variety of other affordable housing developers to figure out, you know, how we can creatively assist and their needs. Um, you've, you've seen with our, our site plan and our product offering, we've got a variety of housing types from uh, you know, smaller to larger that, that meet all types of uh, income levels. So we think we've got a really diverse kind of workforce housing opportunity there, as I alluded to with, with some of the, the UNC potential there. Um, but we do recognize the town's requirements and our proposal does indicate that we're willing to to work with the town to figure out what's the right mix because uh, we'll be offering 103 of these uh, units as affordable housing units. And, and we know that's a significant amount of units. So we're willing to work with the, the right partners. We've had a, a couple of, of conversations more recently, but then over the past several months, we've, we've been engaged with those folks, including the community home trust um, folks. So we're excited about what that could, could lead to. Um, and then finally, uh, Sustainability is an important topic to us, as I know it is to, the, to those in our community. Um, Mark may not have touched on it, but but he, I think he talked about the, up on the the uh, rooftops. We're evaluating the the chance to do solar there. Um, we've we've engaged with a local consulting firm, Southern Energy Management. They're actually a national thought leader in that space, but they're here in the Triangle to help us evaluate that feasibility. Also, electronic charging stations. Uh, throughout the, the condo underbuilding parkings, as well as some surface ones. And, um, you know, it's not just about meeting the town's energy management plan, but, but about really providing uh, what is needed and, and important to the community as a whole. So, so why don't I just stop there? Um, there's a lot of other things we could talk about, but certainly want to be respectful of everyone's time and, and hear those that have thoughts or comments. of the public have questions, you can use the raise your hand feature and we can call on them as we see them. And apologize for if we mess your names up. Um, I have a question. Uh, John Reese, I see your hand raised. And Sarah Harold, you're next. 
I can wait. I think she mentioned said something first. So okay. Sarah. See, Lee? Yes, I have a question. Hi, thank you. Sorry. Um, I think I was on mute. I um, I've been using OB Creek and um, you know, as a recreation area since 1975. Um, what steps are you? You know, and our zoning right next door limits us to one resident per acre to reduce impacts to the creek and the watershed. So what are what are you doing to protect the natural area? I understand the 80 acres in um, conservation easement, but are there other things? Yeah, so there's, that's kind of a, a twofold uh, question there. As far as the conservation approach goes, um, regarding the, the kind of passive recreational use, that, that will still be allowed. That's, that's our goal with the folks that we're working with that would kind of hold that easement, that there would still be that opportunity for it to be utilized um, for trail users. I mean, and certainly um, not just the, the residents, but the local community as yourself. Um, and hopefully we can then connect with other nearby or adjacent trail systems. So we've got a really um, great community amenity there. Um, regarding stormwater and, and, and protection of, of uh, Wilson Creek, Obie Creek, um, Certainly, that is an, an area of importance to us, and, and our engineering team has studied that. We've we've been out on site with town staff, looked at the uniqueness of it, some of the um, concerns from the previous approval, and and how you know the approach was done there. And and I think with um, our creative engineering approach, we we've got a variety of stormwater uh, management devices that um, might be too much in the weeds to get into in detail here, but but we're certainly um, going to meet the town standards with those um, and look forward to kind of discussing that at some of these advisory board meetings in more detail there, you know, there is a stormwater advisory board meet or a committee. And so we'll be, be talking with those types of details at that time. Can we get there, John? Yeah, sure. I? I'll, oh, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll be quick. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, just a couple of things about the electronic car, electric car charging. I think you should really, um, you probably are, but um, you should, with, with the timeline of building this, you really need to have a lot, um, you know, you know, a lot more than a minimum. Um, a concern I have, and I'm going to direct this mostly to the town, but also to the applicant. Um, Sumac Road, um, you know, having a connectivity there. Right now, Sumac Road, um, you know, is is a wide road and it goes through a, um, a park area. And um, I'm concerned about speeding already on Sumac Road. In addition to signaling, I think there should be some traffic calming measures on the Southern Village side for um, Sumac, because obviously this is gonna increase traffic to, um, onto that road. And then the last thing real quick, is um, it's really cool that you've got this path along 15501, but it's kind of zigzaggy. And, um, you know, we don't build roads like that. Um, it may look good, but when you're making a path that people want to get, um, make movements on, um, you're making it longer for them to go someplace on that path when you're having it like an S instead of I mean, having it go straight. And then um, something to think about, depending on whether you consider that path a recreational facility or an extension of some sort of mobility connections for people reaching the BRT station or moving along that corridor. Uh, that's all. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, points well taken. And, and as, as it relates to your last point, um, we, we know we, we need to, to do some more grading and analysis on that and, and integrate some more thought on that and bringing in that, that local landscape architect to help out with that is, is gonna be a big, um, enhancement of, to that. So, so certainly um, that's, that's good feedback and we'll take that into consideration. And then I, I took some notes there about the other uh, comments re regarding the SUMAC on the other side of SUMAC. And, and when we talk with our um, engineers with the, the, with the town too, we'll, we'll bring those up as well, but thank you. Celie and then Carol. Thank you, thank you. Uh, just a couple of, of quick comments. One, there, for this project is 
out of uh, character of the of the uh, area, which is and it's surrounded by quiet residential neighborhoods, a um, a place where uh, there can be amplified music would be uh, would, would allow people to, sitting in their homes and their bedrooms to be unwilling uh, attendees. I would ask that you do no amplified music or sound as a covenant um, as a as just in respect for the surrounding neighborhoods which I can say are quiet neighborhoods of for people who bought in those areas or rent in those areas because they didn't want to live downtown so I would I, I plead with you not to have amplified entertainment in in this um, in this area. Um, Southern Village has a little now and then in the middle of a of a, uh, a somewhat of a commercial area. This is residential and right across the creek are people's yards. Um, they've been there for a long time. The other um, comment that I have is there's a this creek is designated as nutrient sensitive, environmentally sensitive, and there is a lot of impervious surface. Um, there is a an article in Scientific American in the last last spring about another town that ended up having to do some very expensive cleanup of the creek. This I consider as pre-cleanup project because it is going, it, the density is so great and the impervious surface above this already endangered creek is just too much. It needs to be lightened up. Um, and so uh, I've, I would just ask that you have concern, more concern for the creek by lowering the density and have uh, concern for the neighbors that you're moving into with this large, very out of character project and not have uh, amplified entertainment outside. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Th thank you. Definitely take your comments under consideration and appreciate the feedback. Carol? Yes, hi. Thank you. Um, thank you for holding this hearing. Um, it's very interesting. I'm just wondering, you know, apropos of the last speaker, were uh, lower density projects considered? How did how did you reach this um, this configuration, this this split? And also, um, if I missed it at the beginning, I apologize, but I didn't hear what the timeline is for the project. Does the town want to answer that timeline or question? Um, well. The uh, the project is still in the first round of review, um, and we have not set the advisory board schedule yet. Um, they are applying for a conditional zoning, which I think the time frame could be 12 to 18 months for to, to go through the planning process. So what about, so that's the first phase, but if you're actually building, you know, how long would something like this Assuming it passes the, the various reviews, would, would it take to build? So, so from that regard, I can answer that. And it's, it's probably a, a phased approach, right? All, not all of the units would be, would be built at once, but the infrastructure uh, perhaps might be built at once. So, so that, that would be um, the, the grading and the uh, roadway work and the utilities and all that. Um, but then the, the buildings would come online thereafter. So it's probably somewhere in the five to seven year time frame of a project with based on a, a lot of uh, factors that that right now we we try to predict right with the economic uh, certainties that we have um, but that's always a caveat so um, but back to your earlier comment do you appreciate that the thoughts on the densities and, and in, in fact this is is quite a bit less than the the density and the intensity of use from the previous or the currently approved project which is known as OB Creek we're actually kind of down zoning this. Um, and as an example of that would be on regarding traffic. So um, I mentioned earlier that we had done, um, we'd begun some traffic and transportation studies and, and just the traffic from our project to, that would be generated compared to the currently approved OB Creek project, we're at 20% of that. So from, from our perspective, this, this is a, a lower density option um, but, but definitely can appreciate your concern uh, re regarding, you know, uh, what, what you deem to be low dense. Yeah. Do you have any more, may I have a, ask a follow-up question? Um, 
uh, I'm just concerned. Do you have any um, concept of the floor plans at this point, or is that just way too early? It's a good question. It's not not way too early. It is um, part, you know, of figuring out uh, the footprints of those buildings and the the unit count and parking. So we've we've got to make some sort of a. Uh, uh, estimates or projections for that. We haven't done the hard uh, design work yet, um, but uh, they, they do range. Like I said earlier, we've got studios that are in the 500 or so square foot on up to three bedrooms that are that are closing into uh, 2,000 square foot of condos. So quite a variety of, of um, options to choose from. And the, the meat of the, the offering is that one to two bedrooms and they're, they're in that uh, you know, seven, 800 square feet up to 11, 1200 square feet. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there additional comments or questions? Did you have another question? I do, but I saw Stuart raise his hand also, so I'll wait Stuart? since I've already asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was curious, uh, in the last project, there, there was talk of a bridge connecting over 15501 between Southern Village and, and this development. Is that still uh, being considered and uh, what planning has been done about that so far? I'm talking yeah. about a pedestrian bridge. Right, right. Yes, sir. Gotcha. And, and now that's something that uh, as we were looking at the initial plans, it, it's something that is in our uh, consideration, but, but not a pedestrian bridge. What's in our consideration is safe pedestrian and bicycle crossings of those two intersections. Um, actually, right, right now, there is a pedestrian crossing from Southern Village on that northern side, Southern Village's northern um, access point pedestrians cross there and to get on to get on the bus to go to campus and so what we're doing with with this study with with dot uh, the town engineers and, and our you know our own en engineers from kimley horn as i mentioned in the beginning um, we're looking at those two primary intersections and, and trying to um, configure them in a way that that is, is not just safe um you know for vehicles but it's also in consideration of, of uh, safety measures for pedestrians and bicycles So, so there's definitely the, the bridge ideas ruled out at this point. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And, and kind of, as I mentioned, I, I think uh, to, to Carol regarding the intensity of use, I think, you know, what was proposed with the currently approved plan had quite a bit more users and, and more of a retail and shopping approach. And perhaps um, that that's merited for that type of uh, use, but for our residential use, um, we don't believe that's, needed. Thank you. John, do you want to go? I see. Yeah, um, just real quick. Then Paul. I had I was I was going to make a comment and I'll wait on that one. Um, but regarding the crossings, um, I, I would recommend having some sort of charrette or some sort of review with people who currently use transit. Um, in like Southern Village to help define how you might make those crossings. For example, the crossing you just mentioned um, at Arlen Park, I just actually used it today to catch a bus. Um, one of the flaws of that particular crossing is the crosswalk is only on the south, um, the south side of the uh, intersection, not the north side. So someone trying to catch the north-south bus, for example, has to cross two roads to get to it as opposed to one. Um, and so it's little things like that, which is, this is the perfect time to think about them. Um, it's best to talk to people who actually use those transit facilities in order to help design it. So my advice would be to work out some sort of process where you could just basically collect input from people who are current transit users in the area um, to help design that. And then the second thing is, is Southern Village has some two over ones um, in, in the district already. You know, much more modest than what you're talking about as far as parking. 
Um, one of the things I've just observed walking around is I, I don't notice that those, those parking structures below those condos are heavily used. And so I'm just, I would recommend if you can, I don't know how you do it, um, to maybe examine those particular existing structures to understand how they're being parked. Because um, obviously parking costs money. And if you, if, you, if you reduce the parking, you can save money and maybe you don't need it all. And, and that's all. Good point. Yes, thank you. Uh, both points were well noted. And, um, and certainly when we meet with the town and DOT regarding those intersection improvements, so there's a lot of different parties to that discussion, right? It's, it's, it's not just us or the town, NCDOT is, is the controlling factor of that road and, and those improvements. So, but I like your idea of, of talking to the users. We have been meeting with the town's transit department and they've, they've provided some, some dialogue and some, some thoughts too, but, but certainly those folks like yourself, they use it. I'm certainly open to, to that feedback too. Thank you. Paul? You're muted. Thank you. It would help if I came off mute. Um, thank you, Sharnika. Lee, you may have covered this in the very beginning, um, but is it, is, is it incorporating what used to be the Strata Solar building across from Southern Village, or will that remain, and it's now a church, I believe, or will that remain independent property from what you're developing? Yeah, so, so that property is not, I did not mention this, but a good, good point for reference. That's not under our ownership, and that is not proposed to be a part of this rezoning application. There is a uh, positive communication and dialogue with that owner and there may be some shared uh, parking and or uh, cross easements for for folks to travel in and out of there. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Burke. Hi, thanks. Um, so I just had sort of a question slash comment um, and I'm going to read this from the so from the missing middle housing website, missing middle housing is defined as a range of house scale buildings with multiple units compatible in scale and form with detached single family homes located in a walkable neighborhood. And I think that sort of in pretty stark contrast to the large scale condo buildings that you're proposing. And I guess I'm a little unclear uh, where the disconnect is here because it seems like the development is tailored a lot more towards high density housing versus what's defined as missing middle housing. Yeah, I understood, Ryan. And, and I think that's right now there's, there's a challenge in, in terminology throughout the country as to you know how you can get housing that's affordable and what do you call it and all that. I think. Um, you know, a year or so ago, Missy Middle was a term that, that was used by the town, and we've utilized it sometimes. I know that's maybe been um, utilized not exactly in, in the context of, of the folks that designed it. Actually, I was at a conference for, with the, the originator of that phrase this, um, this, I guess it would be the spring. And, and so, yeah, I understand your point and um, certainly uh, appreciate it and how we can better describe what we're, we're saying. What we're saying is that, that we are offering housing that hits that middle income price point. So that, that might be a more accurate uh, term to use. Okay, and so just to follow up with you quickly, have you all done any actual studies on housing demand in the area and the types of amenities that middle income families are looking for? Um, I know, uh, like nationally, there are trends towards not wanting condensed housing in condo units, and people are looking for more outdoor space, yards, just space to move around. Has any type of study been done there in terms of the Chapel Hill market? Yeah, definitely done uh, several market studies, done, done, you know, ones where we've engaged uh, large national type consultants and then even done others uh, with local folks done our own kind of boots on the ground um, evaluation not just Chapel Hill because Chapel Hill is really unique and and the housing that has um, been made available um, if you, we've looked at Durham and Raleigh and, and some of those other sort of like areas when you think about um, a town center and then a, an area 
outside of that. So, so we, we've tried to do some comparables in our region, the triangle, and then also, you know, looked at the state and, and what's happening nationally. your question or do you have a follow-up uh th that's okay for now thanks okay uh elizabeth you're muted yes. hi um i do want to comment on someone who spoke earlier about the parking in southern village um i think that person was probably referring to um some of the units around the green that are not residential um I happen to live above Weaver Street in Southern Village, and we have parking issues all the time because we have non-covered parking. And um, our problem is that it's so close to the north-south bus um, stop that people who don't live here or work here are using our parking spaces. And therefore, it gets to be really difficult at times to find parking. So I would encourage you to talk to all of the people, not just some of the people in regards to parking needs. Thank you. Good point. And, and definitely making notes of that to, to make, make sure we consider that as the plan evolves. Thank you. Thank you. John? I have a quick question on the impact on our schools. Assuming that there are families that will be residents, what do you forecast the impact on Scroggs and Colberth in particular, which could be walkable and Carver or High School? Thank you. We, we don't have it this time. We don't have a formal study that provides that impact. It's something that, you know, as the process evolves, we'll, we'll be looking at that. Um, we, we did an analysis early on and it's, it's from memory. And so, um, just with with the units being a little bit smaller in nature, the um, kind of the the calculator of kids per unit evolves from that. So I, I'd, I'd kind of be giving you inaccurate information if I was trying to go back to that information I had in the past. So, so apologies, I, I don't have that answer for you, but it's it's definitely something that we we will be uh, analyzing here. It's left of the meeting. Um, are there additional questions or um, lead? Did you or your team have? Um, uh, I, th I think we covered it all. Unless uh, team, if anything uh, missed or, or mis misstated, please uh, help me out here. <laughs> and apologies on the, the internet stability. Uh, 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 definitely. Uh, did not intend for it to be that way, but but uh, I think we we were able to work through it. Um, well, I don't see any hands. Um, if someone has a question or comment, uh, feel free to speak up. Um, otherwise, I think we I think we're done for the evening. Okay. Well, thank you. We appreciate everything. Excited to uh, work with you all in the community on this project. And, and, and thanks again. Um, we've also provided a copy of uh, Lee's presentation on the project page um, on the town's website. And we'll be updating that um, as the project goes through the conditional zoning process. Uh, you can also email me uh, if you have any questions. Um, and Enjoy your evenings. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Bye.